Welcome everybody. I want to thank you all for joining me for another programming exercise in Java. Today we're going to tackle a exercise that haunted me for a while and I feel like it might have haunted you guys as well. It's number palindromes. The problem reads, write a method which takes in an integer and have the method return a boolean. If the number is a palindrome, return false, otherwise return true. Now, the first question that may have came into you guys' minds, I know it came into mind, was what is a palindrome? Some of us have never heard of it before. Now, a palindrome is basically where it's the same thing forwards and backwards, no matter if it's a number or a string. Now, as of right now, I don't have a string example for you guys, but luckily for us, this program only pertains to numbers. I have two examples for you guys. One example is 212. This is a palindrome because if you read it the opposite way, it is also 212. Another example is 11 is a palindrome. An example of something that wouldn't be a palindrome would be 23, for example. If you put 23 in reverse, it's 32. 23 and 32 are not the same, therefore it's not a palindrome. Now that we understand what a palindrome is, it's time to start coding. The first part of this problem states to us that the method has to take in an integer and it must return a boolean. So we know that our method is going to return a boolean and take in an integer. Public, static, Boolean, I'm going to name the method is palindrome. Parameter is an integer value. It doesn't matter what you name it. And we know that it's going to return false if it's not a palindrome, and it will return true if it is. In order to compare these numbers, the best way I can think of is to compare the last digit on the end of the number. Because basically we are gonna have to take the number, store it in a new value, and compare those two values to make sure that they're equal. Once they're equal, we return true. So we're gonna set up some variables inside of the method int last digit this is going to store or hold the value of the last digit then we are going to make a variable called reverse this is going to store the reversed number so that we can compare the two numbers to see if they're the same. And also what I'm going to do here is I'm going to store the number into another value. The reason for this and which I'll show you guys more on the logic understanding section when we start getting into the math of this. It's because when we are going to step through the number, the number is going to change. When we compare them at the end, we still want 212 or 11 to be the number that's compared with the reverse number. We don't want the number to change.
like I mentioned earlier, we are going to have to step through the number multiple times in order to break off the last digit. In order to do this, a good way to do this would be creating a while loop. So we're going to create a while loop that's going to keep going until number equals zero or number equals zero or number ends up being less than zero. So basically if you can see here I put the opposite of what I just said into the while loop. We want the loop to keep going as long as the number is greater than or equal to zero. So if we were to put number 212 into this function, we're going to start talking through the math before I start coding it, just so we understand what's going on. So if we take in 212 and we do the modulus, anybody that doesn't know what the modulus is, a modulus is the remainder of a number. It will come out as a positive number because it's basically taking the number that would show in the calculator on the decimal side as a whole number. So if we were to have done 2 divided by, I'm sorry. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to edit to the This is going to suck. 2112 mod 10 is 2. So we're going to code that now. We're going to use last digit to store this value. So last digit equals number mod 10. Number mod 10, we're going to get the answer of 2. Now, what we want to do is we want to store the value of 2 into the value of reverse. But in order to do that, we want to move reverse over one decimal place first so that it can constantly be moving over a place to store the value. Reverse equals reverse times 10. And then we are going to store the value of last digit into reverse. This is a kind of a little shortcut here. If you guys want me to explain this, go ahead and leave a comment below. I can make a video on this. But it's basically doing the same thing as line 20. It's just adding. I just didn't type it all out. So I can comment here for you guys. The plus equal sign, it means reverse. plus last digit. So all it's doing is it's adding the current value of reverse, which is zero, to last digit, which is two. And by you adding it together, it's gonna to restore it into reverse. Now reverse has the value of two. Now that reverse has the value of two, which is what we want, we are going to ch chop off the two off of the number. Now that we know that the number is no longer needed since it's stored into reverse. So we're just going to divide 212 by 10, which will give us 21. And that's going to be the new number we use when we step back through this loop. Now, once it finishes stepping through the whole entire loop, after this, we want to compare what I was telling you guys before, value to reverse, so that if it's the same, it'll return true, otherwise it'll return false. I think we're all done here, so let's try and test it and see if this works.
I'm going to create a variable called boolean match that will take in the method of the number and then we are going to print out the results of if it's true or false. And it prints out true, so it looks like it works. Let's try 23. So that should print out false because it's not a match. Okay, we got false. Now, if we tried a positive number, I mean a negative number, a negative number should still work. Let's try a negative 11. Because it being negative doesn't really matter. We just want to know if the number is a palindrome or not. And it does work. So as you guys saw, we created a nice little method there that will check and see if a number is a palindrome or not, no matter if it's positive or negative. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. I want to thank you guys for watching so much. And don't forget to like and subscribe and share. And I hope that you guys learned something new today. And that you guys have a great day.